morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. The court will please come to order. There's a quorum present. All of our members are present. Uh, the court has been duly called. All of our legal notices have been duly posted. Is there a motion to close the December 2017 term? So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is there a motion to open the January term? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And the bailiff will please open court. All rise. Dallas County Commissioners Court is now in session. The January 2018 term, the Honorable Clay Lewis Jenkins presiding. Please remain standing for the invocation. And the invocation today will be given by my guest, Pastor Doug Watts. Come on down. Pastor Watts is Director of Pastoral Care at Children's Medical Center in Dallas. And since 2010, he has served in this position, which is uh, responsible for quality family-centered spiritual care for patients, families, and staff of Children's Medical Center Dallas, Children's Legacy, and Texas Scottish Rite Hospital for Children. Pastor Watts is responsible for research initiatives unique to children's spirituality in a hospital setting. He's also responsible for oversight of the clinical pastoral education program and the hospital bereavement program. He brings more than 30 years of pastoral experience to children's, having served in congregational ministry since 1979. His work began in Macaulay, Texas, before moving to Mount Vernon, Indiana, Coshocton, Ohio, and then coming to Dallas to serve as the children's minister at Royal Lane Baptist Church. We have a bunch of buddies at Royal Lane. <laughs> he is a graduate of Hardin-Simmons University and holds the Master of Divinity from Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, as well as a certificate in the Spiritual Guidance of Children General Seminary in New York. Welcome, Pastor Watts. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So we begin our prayer this morning. I would like to read a quote from Albert Einstein who said, Imagination is more important than knowledge. Let us pray. God of imagination and wonder, grant us on this new day to Judge Clay Jenkins, Commissioners Dr. Theresa Daniel, Mike Contrill, John Wally Price, and Dr. Elba Garcia, the gift of imagination. When they are cornered by requests on every side, may they see with a clear vision the opportunities to make a difference in this moment in time. Give them courage in their fear, grace in their failure, and humility in their success. Give them ears to hear with discernment the voices of children in our community, children of every race who speak loud and clear what is needed for their care and healing. Guide them also in the use of their collective knowledge to bring to fruition that which is already planned. Grant also, God, that they may use the gift of imagination to dream possibilities that take us beyond our current collective knowledge toward an unknown yet hope-filled future. Remind them and us daily that new discovery means seeing what everybody has seen and thinking what nobody has thought. In the name of God, who is known by many names, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right, it's resolution time. Mr. Price has our first resolutions. Judge, commissioners, um, good morning. Good morning. In the Swahili word of Habara Gani, the last of the Ngudo Saba is Imani. Uh, today is the day of Imani. Today is a day of faith, and in the All Black Church, we have a saying that we've come this far uh, by faith, and faith of all the seven principles is really kind of the guiding principle as far as I am concerned in terms of how we get here and stay here, uh, especially given everything else that's going on. So, uh, again, Abaragani. Uh, imani, which means faith. That being said, is uh, Dollar Spencer 
here. Not, I will just move the resolution on uh, Dollar Spencer um, for 24 years of service to Dallas County Health and uh, Human Services. I so move. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next will be Frank Bromley. If you'll come forward with that entire delegation back there with you. Oh, look at that. He brought the house. Yeah. He's so good. Can I second this one? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes, sir. Come on, sir. Mr. Daniel wants to second this. Oh, okay. He lives in my district. That's right. I'm sorry? Well, he lives in my district. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> the resolution reads that whereas the Dallas County Commissioner's Court takes special notice, where an individual has given long and faithful service to Dallas County, and whereas Frank A. Bromley III was born in Chicago, Illinois, he attended Lyons. Township High School in LaGrange, Illinois, and he enjoys fishing, golfing, reading, and relaxing at the Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Alabama, or any Caribbean beach. <laughs> and whereas Frank has a T. Cole Masterpiece Officer's License since 2002, and T. Call Civil Process Proficiency Certification since 2003, and a T. Call Firearm Instructor Certification since 1999, and a T. Call Basic Instructor Certification since 1990. He is a member of the Texas Peace Officer Association and the Texas Municipal Police Association. And whereas Frank began his Dallas County career on December 1st, 1987 in Constable Precinct 8 as a Deputy Constable 1 in the Civil Division. And whereas Frank has continuously served Dallas County in positions with increasing responsibilities to include Deputy Constable 1 in Constable Precinct 8, Warrant and Writ Enforcement Unit, and Sergeant, Lieutenant, Captain, Assistant Chief, Deputy, and Deputy Constable 1 and Constable Precinct 1, where he currently serves. And whereas Frank has served Dallas County continuously and diligently for 30 years, it now therefore be it resolved that the Dallas County Commissioner's Court does hereby recognize and extend sincere appreciation to Frank A. Bromley III for 30 years of faithful service and further express his best wishes in his future years of service to Dallas County. And I so move. Second. And I know Commissioner Daniels wanted to second as well, so we'll do a dual, dual second. second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Court. Coffee. Appreciate it. Um, 30 years have gone, come and gone, and maybe the next 30 will be just as, just as well. You're glad for punishment. Yes, sir, Commissioner, we've gone through a lot for 30 years. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we have. And I've seen you all of that time, 30 years. Yes, sir. Okay. Constable uh, Gully, you got anything to say about We've heard enough, uh, both Commissioner Daniels, I, and even, I think, even Commissioner Garcia uh, sitting on civil service, we've heard quite a bit in terms of uh, this particular deputy constable and uh, what he has provided to Dallas County in terms of backup constable. Well, first of all, I thank you, Commissioners uh, and Judge, for acknowledging Frank Bromley. Yes, he has been an asset to Precinct 1, and we definitely appreciate it. I've looked at him for some civil service uh, legal <laughs> remedies from time to time, but we definitely appreciate his service and we are looking for many more years of service with Frank Bromley at Precinct 1. Um, so you can go home tonight. You got some folks that's kind of standing with you. 
<laughs> you may want to introduce him. His yeah. wife? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, in 30 years, you haven't learned that. <laughs> Just an overset on my part. Yeah, sure. yeah. I'm, I'm brother trying to help you out. Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, like uh, this is my wife, Val, and my daughter, Elizabeth. Okay. Well, thank you. And thank you for the, for the, for the sacrifice. I thank Commissioner Daniel said it the other night. <laughs> as we uh, swore in uh, uh, our uh, new sheriff um, that, you know, not just the officers on the ground sacrifice, but the family sacrifice. The and team effort. And we, we, we thank you all for the sacrifice, you know, as, as well. And, of course, all of the colleagues um, who day to day uh, work hand in hand so that we can do what, what we're charged with doing. And we want to thank you for your leadership for all these many years, not only in Precinct 1, but in Dallas County. Uh, as Commissioner Price just read, you are extremely qualified pretty much to do almost any kind of uh, job within Dallas County. So it's great to see Elizabeth. I remember when I met her, she still has mixed dentition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's just a beautiful young woman, and you know, it's delightful to see Belle as well. So thank you for everything you've done, Constable Gully. Thank you for recognizing, you know, Chief Romney today. And thank you. I mean, the fact that all much. of you are here today shows the support and admiration and friendship that people feel for you. It's a team effort, obviously. <laughs> and today is, uh, I guess, Precinct 1 day. Uh, Donald L. Carter, Jr., you want to step forward? And where is Dallas County? continues to take special notice where an individual has given long and faithful service to Dallas County and whereas Donald L. Carter Jr. was born in Dallas, Texas. He attended W. W. Samuel High School in Dallas, Texas. He enjoys motorcycle activities and he is a gun collector and a car enthusiast. Whereas Don is a master peace officer and a certified instructor He's a member of the Dallas County Peace Officers Association. And whereas Don began his Dallas County career, on May the 26th, 1992, in the Sheriff's Department as a jailer. And whereas Don has continued to serve Dallas County in positions with various responsibilities, including Deputy Constable 1 and Constable Precinct 6, Civil and Traffic Divisions, Truancy Court Officer and Constable Precinct 5, Detective in the Sheriff's uh, Emission Enforcement Unit, and Warrant Deputy in Constable Precinct 1, where he currently serves. And whereas Donald has served Dallas County continuously and diligently for 25 years, and now therefore be it resolved that the Dallas County Commissioner's Court does hereby recognize and extend sincere appreciation to Donald L. Carter Jr. for 25 years of faithful service and further express his best wishes for his continued years to Dallas County and so many. Oh. Second. All those in favor seem to have a saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries in the Thank you very much. Commissioners, I really do appreciate it. I didn't come up with a speech or anything, but it's been long. It's been a long time with, with Dallas County and just to know that I've been with several precincts, and Precinct 1 actually acknowledged my time here with, with the Constable's Office and actually bring this forth and to you guys for y'all to acknowledge me with the 25-year thing. It's, it says a lot about Precinct 1, and I, I do appreciate my Precinct 1 family being here, Constable Tracy Gully, and everyone uh, being here, and, and you all be, to be able to acknowledge uh, my service to Dallas County. Constable. Once again, we, I, I thank you for this acknowledgement. Um, Officer Carter has been around for a moment, actually before I even came, but um, he has been a great asset to Precinct 1, and we definitely appreciate him. He left and went to the task force and helped lead that uh, remarkable team for some time, and we're definitely honored to have him back on our team, and we, too, look for bigger and brighter things at Precinct 1 with him on our team. Thank you. Okay. And one of the things I, I want to say, you know, it's, it's interesting as... Uh, <clears throat> court administrator, sister court administrator, and some of us were around this weekend, and um, 
I mean, everything from what I call just baseline on the probably as much for political reasons as anything, and I recall it like it was yesterday, I guess Commissioner Cantrell and I were the only two around. When uh, the emissions, clean air, clean air task force, call it what you will, uh, wind up in the Sheriff's Department. But at the end of the day, it was you and McCall who made sure that that department operated. Operated with efficiency, had cases, dealt with it, and regardless of who came along, y'all wind up having the training. I guess that's one of the concerns I continue to have around Dallas County, and we recycle people all the time. Probably to, to you know, some of our chagrin, but you know, regardless of who came from other precincts and got put in the top position, you and McCall stayed consistent. Uh, Ryan will tell you, I constantly monitored the cases, constantly monitored what you're doing, and you were the two where they were producing. The other people were getting paid, but y'all were producing. And so thank you for that service. Um, again, the... Um, as opposed to the policing, it got caught up in politics down at a place called, uh, well, it's south of here, near Austin. Uh, and so, be that as it may, you, you, did, you did yeoman's work, both of you. And thank you uh, from uh, a grateful uh, constituency for what you did. Unlike some other places where you were, we'll we'll get you your we'll we'll get you your plaques. Okay. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> no watch, but a plaque. We got you. <laughs> the uh, fourth one, Judge, is the ratification of what I read with uh, uh, regarding to um, uh, Michael Grace, which is the President's <coughs> Award for the Greater Dallas Planning Council. We read it, and uh, we just we need we just rat we just ratified. <laughs> we just go, we just got ratified. We had it under the deal, but we. Remember, oh, we read it. Time well, it wasn't. It wasn't in time. Okay. We ratified. And we just need to ratify. It. All those but, in favor? Aye. 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 No. Oh, we, did we get a second? We didn't get a second. Yeah. We, we didn't get a second. second. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Yeah. I second. Any yeah. opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And our next uh, resolutions are from Dr. Garcia. Thank you. Um, uh, judge, colleagues, and of course, it's an honor for me to recognize a good friend, uh, someone that has been given Dallas County more than 25 years of service. And uh, I'm going to ask Aurora Miranda to come forward with her delegation. I know she has some family and friends that are with her, and I will ask them to come forward. Uh, and the resolution reads as follows. Whereas the Dallas County Commissioner's Court takes a special notice and acknowledge where an individual and his employer have contributed and provided exceptional service to Dallas County. And whereas Aurora Miranda graduated from H. Grady Spruce in 1976 and attended El Centro College after that. And whereas Ms. Miranda began working with Dallas County in 1992 at the Justice of the Peace Court, since 1998, she has been working with the district clerk's office. Most recently, she, works as, she worked as the chief clerk for the 304 Juvenile District Court. And whereas, Ms. Aurora Miranda is married to Robert Miranda, program manager for the city of Dallas. They have two daughters, Jessica Birch and Mary Miranda, and four grandchildren, Gabriel, Adriana, Miranda, Mary, and Roman Alexander. Ms. Aurora Miranda is looking forward to retirement and enjoy more time with her family. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Dallas County Commissioner's Court does officially recognize and congratulate Aurora Miranda on her retirement after 25 years of faithful service to Dallas County and wish her well in her future life ahead. And I so move. Second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Aurora. 
Thank you all commissioners for allowing me to be here and serving Dallas County for 25 years. It's been my pleasure. Uh, I'd like to special thanks to my husband, Robert, my special friend, Mary Macias attorney and Dolores Esparza, public defender for being here with me today. Um, I'm gonna take my sister, Flora Soto's advice that passed away in July of cancer. She said, don't work all your life where well, you can't enjoy it. So I'm gonna take her advice and call it a day. So, well, I, I thank wasn't gonna say that Judge Shannon ran you off, but uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, 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 you're getting great. So thank you. Thank, uh, you. thank you for your And support. we have someone next to you as well. This is Adrena uh, Miranda. She's Hi, eight years old, her first granddaughter out of two. And we have a 12-year-old grandson and a two-year-old grandson. And four-year-old. And a four-year-old, yes. Four -year -old. So we're going to be busy. I'm going to be busy. You're going to be busy. Yes. Congratulations. Yes, Thank you very much. And we've got several presentations today, the first being from Health and Human Services. Uh, we, we don't uh, we don't we don't have one today on that one, you Judge, and uh, we, we were okay. Um, I'm going to go to my judicial management <clears throat> uh, a piece, and the reason I want to go to judicial management there are a couple of things. First of all, uh, we're owed uh, Ryan. I think I sent a email last week or a week for last with regards to the whole piece of truancy under judicial management. Um, where, where are we? We're owed a briefing on that. And uh, so I want to I I I I talk, I want to know where we are. On. The committee that was established has met. Um, we, we did discuss some various options in the budget offices currently writing up the proposal. Hopefully we'll have something for the, not probably this next Tuesday or court, but the following Tuesday, first Tuesday of February. We were delayed. We had originally said we would have this done in December, but it's taken a little bit longer than anticipated um, to pull everything together. Um, the proposal that we're looking at is to have one truancy judge who would be who would basically travel around to the various courts and hear the cases um, that are that would be filed with that. Um, um, I know what's that. What's the cost? What the, is the cost? The cost for that would be about a half a million dollars. It's in, in the revenue from the truancy courts for 2017 was right at about a half a million dollars. So it, it would match up similar to what the revenue was. Well, I, if you'll also recall, I sent you an email on the judicial management to talk about uh, <clears throat> justices of the peace. And I'm well looking at their caseloads. Their caseloads are down. Correct. Why? Why would we be talking about them spending another half a million dollars when their caseloads are down? And some of them are already getting truancy cases. So why? Why would we even be contemplating? The, the general concept that the budget office has is that the school districts like the truancy court program. Will be. Uh, I understand, um, that, but they're, that does allow them to do an electronic filing into the truancy system. Those judges are dedicated and hear those cases very promptly, and that therefore the school districts like those. It is clearly a decision of commissioner's court whether or not they want to take into account the school district's desires, uh, or if they want to disband truancy courts completely and move them back to the JP courts, or if the school districts want to file with the municipal courts, they can do so. Well, I understand that, but if again, I want when you make that comparison, JP filings are down. Correct. JP filings are down, and the okay. staffing in the JP courts has been decreasing over the last roughly five years. Um, the de their filings decreased dramatically with the decrease in, in constable traffic, and then with the sheriff's traffic program being scaled back as well. I would also like to make the comment too that school districts have contacted me, the people who work in truancy. Um, because of the quality of, of the attention to the cases. And sometimes we also have to take into account, I understand, but sometimes we've got to take into account what are we trying to do here and what are better ways to but, do it. And I'm not saying that you, you ignore um, you know, who bears the cost in the end, <clears throat> but, but it's still it, something okay, to I'm take sorry, into I'm account. Sorry, 
They've gutted the legislation. So what? I mean, they got all these filings. And one of the things, Ryan, that I'm looking at, we got all the filings. But they're not showing up. The no-show rate is Okay, is, is so, they're not, so they're not appearing. They got all the filings. What? You can't do nothing. You have no power. So, I mean, regardless of what they like <coughs> in terms of the school district, we, they have no power to do anything. So we got all of these filings, the filings are coming in, we're doing all the process, and then the no-show rate is going through the roof, and so you can't do nothing. You are right? correct. You are correct. What kind of sense does that make? I mean, at some point in time, I mean, we, either we're going to drive it or we're not. I mean, I keep playing with this stuff. Okay, I'm just throwing it for the court. I want all, all of it. I mean, don't just say, well, we looked at it and we got a roving. Uh, now, yeah, I anticipate a healthy debate, it sounds like, when well, I do I the presentation. Well, debate. I just want all the facts yep. on the table. Right. It'll all be there. Yeah, and, and yeah, and let's, let's talk about it because the filings are up, but nobody's showing them. So you can't do anything. It still costs them half a million dollars. They still prefer it. What does that mean? So The report's coming out next month. Yes. <coughs> They'll be on the commissioner's court agenda. That, yep. Okay. Uh, that being the case, there is another <coughs> court uh, that uh, is that is here showing full time. Uh, the judge is getting paid at a full stipend. Got court reporters at a full stipend, <coughs> and they're not there full time. That is correct. I'll be setting that, up that, a meeting that, with the that, civil that, district that. judges to discuss. <laughs> Not, not, not uh, you said school district. Oh, the, the civil, civil judges, district yeah. judges. Okay, yeah. so I, uh, you know, so I want the court to understand. Uh, we got a, we got a tax court over there that's meeting part time. We're paying a court reporter full time. We're paying a judge full time. They're not working. You know, at some point in time, like you said, we talk about we're managing and driving. Let's drive. It's a new year. Let's drive. So make the year. So you're going to meet with them and you're going to get back with us. We. I will be meeting with them this week, and then we'll get back with you probably after that. And the court deserves, I mean, I've looked at it, but the court deserves, you know, a full-blown deal on that, too. Yeah, I'll bring forth a full-blown thing on that after I've talked with the judges. I, you know, these are all new judges. This court has been around since well before any of these judges have been in place, so I'm fairly certain they don't understand the history behind it. So once I explain the history, I assume we'll have a change. Okay. Um, when will that report be out? The information is available already on my desk. I just haven't had a chance to meet with the judges because of the, the holidays. So within the month? Absolutely. Uh, the other piece that's on judicial management this morning is on our court's agenda <clears throat> in terms of uh, the judges having made a position with regards to the... Uh, Risk assessment, uh, uh, Mr. Heichel. You, you're referring to the engagement of the Engage, site consultant? Engage. Yes, uh, Commissioner. And the agenda today is a contract with a scope of work attached. The scope of work was agreed upon by the, at least the presiding judges from the Frank Crowley Courts building. The um, contract is on there. I've met with um, Javid and I met with Duane. And they're just waiting for this to be approved so they can move forward with the consultant to begin engaging this process of um, setting up more definitively our pre-trial release department. So. Okay. okay, and the piece with regards to the uh, pre-trial is, um, and Mr. Steele, you have no, no compunction about that uh, with regards to the pre-trial piece. You are because I, I need the numbers. I was a little thrown by some of those uh, those numbers. Uh, I didn't realize we had that many people on. Uh, um, Pre-trial. Pre I call it breath. No, yeah, that, no, that that whole breathalyzer piece. Uh, for some reason, I I was recalling that we were having about. Uh, <laughs> I thought we had, you know, four, five, six hundred. Uh, it's my understanding. I looked at some numbers. I think I asked you the other day. We got 1,200. Yeah. <clears throat> On our alcohol monitoring uh, uh, unit, at any given time, we have about 1,240 uh, some clients. 
Um, it, it, it was interesting uh, in a story, of, well, a story, both a story of the weekend as well as, I, I guess I want to see what kind of monitoring we have. That, that apparently the, the technology has advanced in such a way. I think there was last year or so that I, I complained about it. But do we have the latest in technology with that monitoring system? Yeah, we use uh, companies such as Smart Start and, and Recovery uh, Healthcare, and their devices are up to par with uh, what is currently being used. Is, is there something that is out on the market or in the marketplace where, and I, uh, where an individual who is operating a motor vehicle has to every, I guess, 15 minutes consistently blow? There are rolling uh, blows, um, breath um, analysis that are taken, but absolutely. Uh, the interlock devices are designed to uh, monitor an individual and make sure that they don't start that vehicle if there is alcohol detected, as well as do consistent rolling uh, breathalyzer tests. Well, to you know about the little, the little lady that was killed in Turn County. He had, he had started the automobile, <coughs> uh, but somehow between him starting it and him getting hurt. How long, I, how long was it? Just a few, just a few weeks ago. No, I mean, from the time he started to the time he hit her. Well, see, I mean, it, it made it sound like it was that morning. That's what I'm asking. I mean, you know, it made, made it, it, you know, and maybe you're more familiar with the I'm case. not totally familiar with the story, so. Yeah, I, I, you know, I just, you know, I just, just, just did the report. Uh, I'm just, I, I just don't know. I just want to make sure our technology is, 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 is up to par. And not only that, it's up on price as well, right? <coughs> it's within uh, price when it, we talk about technology for DWI, the one that we have in Ellis County, is not only up to par, but also within a price that is comparable everywhere <coughs> in the United price. States. You said price? Yeah, oh, money, price. money. Yeah, money correct. This okay. is it's somewhere in the range of about $75 a yeah. month well, for defendants to okay. utilize the equipment. Okay. I just just want to want want to make sure that we have the latest technology because there, there was you remember last year I had some concerns and I guess that was a different monitor but I just want to make sure all of our 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 yeah, our, our MOUs have always uh, gone through CSCD uh, with regard to uh, the alcohol monitoring uh, agencies that we utilize we have about four or five that do uh, have the interlock and then a couple of others that have other devices other than in a lock, um, handhelds, home devices, things of that nature, so. Okay. But I'm glad you're asking that, Commissioner Price, because, you know, even when technology has improved, even when education has improved, it's amazing to see that DWI continues to be one of the, um, one of those issues that kills the most people. Well, they, they and, figured out how to work around. Yeah. Walk mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Steele. It's always Steel. great to see you. And we're ready to begin that other project down there as soon as Mr. Warren understands that the court is in charge of facilities. That's all right, Mr. Warren. No, you, you don't have to respond to that. We, we, we got it. We're, we're, we're on. And I can help you in any kind of way, Mr. Warren. Just let me know. You know that I'm yeah, yeah. in charge of that yeah. part. Yeah. Well, no, it's just that we, we've identified the, the, the space and we're, we're, mo we're moving forward. And, uh, oh, sure. he's going to tell us something. Oh, well, no, that's because he came down there and tried to take back eight or ten uh, uh, feet. I mean, anyway, go ahead. No, no. But, uh, well, in I, Dallas I, I, County, I'm, space I'm working, is the biggest I'm, I'm, work, I'm working with Mr. Steele to make sure that he's taken care of. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Oh. Okay. Sight and release, we're going we to have, are we going to get a report on this stuff? Kind of where are we? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep it out of it because it's, it's... Once it's up and running, we will be working with the judiciary to develop monitors and statistics. It was statistics. up and running December 1st. Remember, that was the, that was the, oh boy, drop dead date. We got to have it. We're going to make it. We got, okay, so this is January 1st. So we got 30 days of it. Where, where are we? Uh, 
to my knowledge, there has not been a, a court. Yeah, that's my point. That's to my knowledge, there has not been a ticket. That's just the reason I'm keeping it out there. I understand. Nothing's been done. That's done it. Okay. PR bonds, dry rents. I'm not going to mess with Mr. Steele anymore. Got it. Um, uh, Pre-trial, we did. I did. We did see your numbers. They're, they're starting to go up, and we're talking. About and this whole piece on the juvenile. You know, I, I know it takes somebody else other than me saying something over the last year. Um, Ms. Carruthers, I'm not going to put you on the spot. Uh, I thought Judge Shannon was going to call me over the weekend, and uh, I was here. I did not hear from her. Taken care of. Beg your pardon? It's taken care of. Okay. Okay. That being the case, Judge, uh, with regards to that, let, let me just take a point of personal privilege and uh, say to the city manager of Hutchins uh, and uh, to Councilman Odom, uh, welcome. He's one of my new city council people uh, there in Hutchins, and uh, uh, we're glad to we're, we're, we're glad to be working hand in hand. As you know, Hutchins has now become number one uh, in the county in terms of uh, commercial values uh, last year. And uh, we're, we're moving forward. Of course, with that, Ms. Commercial Lowe, values, you uh, mean increasing? Increasing. Increase. Yeah, increasing commercial value. Surpass that town called Addison or something. It, 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 we're coming back. Yeah, I got you. Okay, got you. <laughs> well, right. We wanted to be sure that it was on the record commission. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> they might understand that we're going down. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. They're going, going up. Yeah, yeah. They're going up the other way with, with regards to commercial you know, in the, in the, the southern sector, which brings us a lot of other challenges. And Ms. Alberta can tell you everything from traffic backing up on 45 to, to housing to all the issues that, you know, that besets anyone else. So, anyway. but, but I mean, Commissioner, I mean, um, in the big picture, that is good. Yeah, no, no, I got that it. That is very, good very problem. good. It's, it's a good, good problem to have when we're one of the fastest growing regions in the United States, and we are doing everything we are doing. You know, I remember when people didn't want to meet with me in Bishop Arts mm. because it was too dangerous. Mm. Look what had happened around there. You know, UNT, you know, um, you can go all the way connecting the dots, and now when, the, when you look at the values and we're competing with Addison yeah. and North Dallas, I, hey, you know, it's a good headache to have. Yeah, and I'm going to thank uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, city manager because now Star Transit, uh, we've taken it, we're running routes uh, in Hutchins. Uh, uh, FedEx has, has, has joined in and bringing other corporates. Uh, I don't know if I sent you a copy, Dart, uh, Councilman Atkins and I, we've all met with regards to that whole transit piece. And I should have put you on the email. I think I did, but nonetheless, I will, I'll follow up. On the transit about UNT? Well, no, the transit with regards to Hutchins and uh, that all the corporates that are coming in, the Procter & Gamble's, uh, the FedExes, the Medlines, all of those. And the problem we're still having is that being able to, even Amazon, and of course that's in Dallas, but as they as they as they try to circle, so that yeah that's still a, that's still a, 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 real, a real challenge. But I just want to thank y'all and Councilman Odom. Thank you for for, for picking up the ball. We even got a hot out there ho new uh, hotel uh, occupancy tax that we're beginning to talk about a center. A lot of things going on. So thank y'all. Thank you for for, le for leadership. That being said, uh, uh -huh. Judge. Um, I'm former mayor of DeSoto, which now he's running for another position. Okay. Uh, next is our consent agenda. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. So, all those in favor seem to vote by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next, we have uh, court orders on mo motions uh, K1 through uh, 51. And addendum uh, 52. Um, I want to talk about uh, the. A pulling 38. I'm going to abstain. And I'm sorry, Mr. Martin. I thought that email went through, and I just saw it last night that it didn't. And uh, I'm going to yeah. abstain on 38. I don't have a conflict, but in the cautious of. 
for uh, 20 for, also for separate vote. For 20 and 30 for separate vote. I'm pulling, uh, now what's the what's the one with the RF 45 Q for yeah? yeah. Let's pull that for a discussion separate vote too. So <coughs> we're pulling. Um, okay, so we're pulling 30. 20, 30. Eight. Now 38 eight. is it? Is that what you intended? That's an extension. Uh. Yeah. Extension of yeah. the body. Yes. But she yes. Got, but okay. She abstained. So, okay. Abstained so it's thir that. 20, 38, and 45 for separate votes. Correct. Okay. Is that it? Yes. Okay. But I do want to, I did get, finally get um, an email this morning from Ms. Ryan with, with regards to 46, and that's just a continuation. Correct. Okay? has nothing to do with everything else that's in the package, just continuation. I did read the email. I wasn't yeah. on that email to begin with. Yeah, yeah. So, I apologize. I didn't forward to your... Not, no, no, no problem. We, we, we're okay. Yeah, we just continue to work on that, right? Yeah. Just a continuation. For we expect that to that, come. Yeah, the This is a continuation to allow us to continue to use the current infrastructure as the new infrastructure comes I'm online. Sorry. I'm sure yes. Mark will be doing <clears throat> updates to the commissioner's court. Yes. So I'll move one through 52, excluding 20, 38, and 50, and 45. Second. Oh, any <coughs> excuse me. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Court order, that means court 20. order. 20 is before us. Move approval. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. All right. Um, Consistent. Yeah. You are. Here. You are. Motion carries four to one. Hold on. All right, that's got it. All right, N next is court order 38. Is there a motion on 38? So I'll, I'll second. Um, Mr. Price, are there any concerns with regards to the performance on this contract? No, the the um, the vendor reported everything's great as well as the, okay. the department. Okay, uh, has, has this contract been going, has been in increasing? I'm not, did I see as much as $400,000 or was I, my eyes tangled on me by that time? Yeah, that's correct. When we do our analysis, what we do is look at what the last year's spend is. And that, that seems to be, we haven't had many more accidents. That sure seems like, that sure seems odd. I don't, I don't recall this contract being that much. It's, it, has it been, is that, is that kind of consistent year to year, $400,000? I'll check what it was the last year, but um, yeah, when we when we do our analysis, we look at what we spent for the previous years moving up to this. I, I guess I want to ask the, uh, someone to kind of provide me. I don't see who's having all these accidents. We, we have that information, Commissioner. Um, in the, actually, in the past six months, you've spent three hundred fifty thousand dollars on repairs too. So why? I mean, well, I mean, I don't know you bring out why, but, but why, why did the last six months seem to grab us? Well, we can pull that data and, and yeah. break that down for you, but that, yeah. that amount should be able to. Yeah, because I, I, I'm just having, you know, my, 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 my problem, my problem is, is that, like I said, when I looked and I saw that, I said, man, maybe I'm, but $400,000 and then six months, 350000 I want to know what's happening, even if it's, uh, and you know, the new share, uh, even if it's on shelves, I want to see. I want to see. Well, I want to see who's running over whom. We have that breakdown, and we can share. Yeah, that okay. Because I, you know, that's 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 a, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of body work. We'll do. Price, is there any problem pulling it till next court? It's just a final extension. Yeah. We all compared no problem. The cost of the similar repairs from last year to this year has repair costs gone up. Well, that's what I asked. Him. He said he said he's going to grab that because I, that that was my concern. I, I I made a note, but but again I I, did, I just want to because we need to caution whatever department it is. I don't know what's going on. And, you, and Mr. Bazan said we haven't. I mean, you're talking about more wrecks. What I'm talking about is the same fender bender costing three times as much to repair. If we check that too, price for repairs, price for repairs. Right. and there ought to be like a, 
the, their unit sheet shouldn't have gone up, but you know, it's all, they're the ones that right. calculate the unit sheet. So sometimes you can come up with a twenty-five thousand dollar repair that perhaps should be a ten thousand dollar repair. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll ask Fleet to look at all those issues. I, I, I can we pull? Can we hold it? Can we the contract expires on March first, so we can. Oh, yeah. we have time. Okay, you just you see, yeah, that's different. You're ahead of the game. Yeah, we we're okay. So if I if the maker uh, does and the second no mind pulling thirty eight, we're good. Okay. All right. Okay. No action this year on that one. And the, and the last one is forty five. Is your motion on forty five? Uh, I'm I'll move forty five. Second. So we can get a point. Okay. Yeah, and, and I just want to. Uh, uh, discuss it and I don't know if we need to pull it or if it's if we can just send it out but um, in the the RFQ itself it just says that we're going to departments are going to doesn't say who is the sort of or who are the the uh, evaluators RFP it's not a yeah I'm sorry RFP who are the evaluators and my idea or I guess it was actually I don't want to take credit for it Dr. Uh, Garcia's idea um, was that we would have each court member pick an evaluator, um, and that way there wouldn't be any a, any feeling on the part of anyone that anyone inside of any department that was getting a, a department head was getting a leg up, or that there was any message to anyone or anything like that. What's your thought of that? I think that's fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, um, I, I, mean, I, I haven't picked all the evaluators yet for the RFP to get with Mr. Price to do that, but I, I don't. That's well, and they could pick the same people, you know, if they wanted. They, they could say, Daryl, who do you think I should pick? But that way it's not a situation where there's an HR person, but there's not an HHS person, or if there's a purchasing person, it lends, it to, you know, any, anything like that. Well, well, this situation you know, seems unique in the respect that there are, there are the, kind of the people well, who are, the positions that are up, um, and it really impacts so many of the right. larger departments. Well, well, and it's unique in this way, too, and Commissioner Price and I were talking about this. You know, Commissioner Price and I serve on the juvenile board, and normally the way an RFQ works, or RFP works, either one, is the evaluators pick, and we're out of the process, and then our job is to listen to or to visit with the two or three, you know, people, or our job is to uh, vote on the contract for whoever won the widget contract. In this situation, um, there, there is a possibility, for instance, I'll give you an example. I'm making up an example from Juvenile. Um, let's say that the evaluate the search firm, two, two examples. Mm -hmm. Search firms come back and one of them says, I can do all four of these for, and I'm making up numbers, $200,000. But one of them is clearly like nationally recognized at Juvenile uh, picking, but he's not the one that can do all four. Um, It'd be nice if there could be enough communication back and forth uh, with us so that we could say, well, why don't you see if you could get the juvenile nationally recognized and have the guy do the other three? Yeah. Um, and so we want to be that, uh, not over the process, but that much involved in it. So, and another example would be, what if it, the search people are coming back and they're saying, um, well, we, we see a really good person in Oklahoma here or New Jersey, and also some good Texans, is that something of interest? Well, I think that's probably something we want to get a little bit of feedback, you know, from and, and kind of discuss so we're not wasting a lot of people's times. My, my gut reaction would be, if it, given the juvenile example again, that if we had a really good person from Oklahoma to throw in the mix, we throw them in the mix. But we'd probably discuss that, you know, and, and think about that. So I don't want a situation where we set up an RFP and the commissioners are completely locked out like it's a purchasing RFP from discussing anything until they see two faces in front of them and have to pick one. Right? Well, but we're going to be locked out anyway based on appointing folks. You know, I, I, you know uh, well, that's what I'm saying, but but not so much that you're you're strong arm in the deal or, or not that you're, I'm not saying anything bad about you, but any of us are that's okay. strong arm in the deal or do anything but that uh, the people can come back to us and say, we're looking at this and this, what are your thoughts about that? Because ultimately, if what we end up with is a process where, um, which we've had kind of in the past a couple of times, where there's, there's one candidate on for something that appears to be qualified and two that appear to not be qualified, 
it's really not much of a decision, you know, for for the court, right? They're just ended up. Do I <coughs> really want to pick the qualified person, or do I want to go back out again? Right, but, but I thought we that had that depends on the quality of the firm pick. You're right. right. So I mean, I think you're talking about a two step process. One being a bond evaluation piece for the RFP, which I, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. The other piece is you know the quality of the 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 candidate, the vendor that right. we choose, and, right. and, and how they operate. So. You know, that we won't know until we get into the process. Exactly. The yeah. So which one are you trying to add that to, Judge? All of them. Like, well, you don't have, you don't, the, the court doesn't have any anything to say about the, uh, um, the um, firm um, juvenile. And, uh, you lost. Okay, so <laughs> how's this different from the way we've done it in the past, yeah, Darryl? Right. In other well, words. The only difference is, is that the judge is asking that you guys will be involved in picking and evaluators as part of the evaluation yeah. committee. That's all. So you can pick Daryl, you can so pick Tracy, you can pick, you can pick The evaluation the committee for what? For each of the RFPs. For the RFP for juvenile, the RFP for uh, HHS, okay. for all of the four I didn't RFPs read this as a... Um, so you're going to have a separate RP for each one. Right. And, and one firm could apply for all four, or one could. I think the problem is that some of these are so specialized that somebody who's a juvenile may not be able well, to focus on HR. Or they could apply for all four. But, but, and, but, 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 but from the, well, that, that's fine. I mean, that, that really hasn't been too dissimilar, Mr. Price, in what, we, what we've done. The, the, the difference is he's at adding a layer in terms of evaluators, okay, that's that's really the issue. Well, and, I'm not adding a layer. I'm just um, the way that we would pick <coughs> the evaluators is is you would pick an evaluator, I would pick, she would pick, and those evaluators would go and do the evaluation just like we do evaluations on everything oh, else. Boy, but the problem we're having, in it, and again, you are adding a layer. Traditionally, we've let staff drive because see, we might pick <laughs> pick evaluator. You know, I, I mean, 99% of the court, I mean, while we understand juvenile, continuing on that example, really doesn't have anything to say about it. You can pick all the evaluators you want to. You don't have anything to say. That's strictly the juvenile board. And so, uh, the, are you saying all, you want to do where the juvenile board picks the five evaluators? Uh, no, the juvenile board already uh, under, under statute. We're, we're already there. Okay, well, I'll amend my, my uh, motion then, to, if, if that's what you, if, if I'm understanding you correctly, and, and help me, if I'm not, tell me. But what I'm saying is that the court should pick the evaluators, and I think what Commissioner Price is saying is, well, Judge, that's our job to pick those evaluators. That's not the court's job, because that's a juvenile board. So if that's the case, how about the court pick the, three, the evaluator, well, yeah, okay, the court picked the evaluators on the, the three, and the b juvenile board picked one evaluator each on the <coughs> juvenile board. Still, still, okay, now, still, still, I still got a problem. My problem is, is that the um, person director, now, we could, we could, we could pick, let's say nobody picked, let's say nobody chose uh, Mr. Martin, or Mr. Ro uh, Mr. Brown, or Mr. Eichel, or Mr. Bazaar, folks who who work with these people every day. Well, if you but, want, but, but no, but no, somebody I, would choose because you'd choose one, right? Hell, I may not choose but one of them. You know, my past my years, recommendation is that if you guys choose one, you still leave me the, uh, the ability to well, choose one also because well, it's important that I have administration. <laughs> exactly, we have that's my point. Well, I, I thought we re revamped our purchasing rules to where we didn't participate. Now we're. This we're, isn't purchasing, uh, Commissioner. Well, this is your core the, function. The RFP is a purchasing. Well, this is your core function to choose, for instance, an HR. So we don't have to go up for an RFP because this isn't purchasing. You, you don't have to, but we're doing that. If, if, if the court desires well, to do that, we're doing I, that. I think that process, though, wouldn't change still. I mean, if you guys would choose the evaluator, but that doesn't mean the evaluator would run back to you each time. Right, well, well, right. We still need to go through the purchasing right. process with the evaluation. Right. Yeah, I'm opposed to changing. I'm opposed to changing it the way that we've done it in the past. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we, but, we get involved once yeah, you yeah. get get it narrowed. Get it well, narrowed then, then, you're, then, then you may not be very involved because there may just be one uh, qualified person that comes before you. But if the concern is that of the particular department that is being addressed at that moment, that 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 the staff in that department currently would have undue influence, might we instruct administration 
to if you're looking at HR that you would not have that person in HR staff involved in that particular one but would have central administration and other people obviously who work with the department mm -hmm. is because that's, that's the that's primary a, that's concern. That's what we right? use though. Hmm? I don't think that's any different. You're right. Well, the concern, right, currently, the, the <laughs> primary concern is we <laughs> got a, a, it's a, yeah, it's a, what you always, been doing. isn't HR usually involved? These are the folks. You know, so the primary concern is it's a core court function, uh, along with like approving a budget. This is a core court function, and um, if we get into a situation in the where the process. court is not at all involved in picking the evaluators and doing anything, and they just bring before you right. so a qualified person for you to say yay yeah or nay on. Well, I think, I think we're looking at a couple of things, though. We wouldn't we would just bring to you, the, the once we pick the vendor, bring to you the qualified person. I think in the past what I've done is, is share with you who the vendors are mm -hmm. before we even get to the process of selecting a vendor. And I would do that again. I mean, if we get three vendors for the purchasing, I would like to share all three with you guys and have your input on who, who we choose as the vendor for each mm -hmm. one of the RRPs. I mean, uh, oh. some of this, something this major, that's what I'm That's the way it's supposed to work. That's, that's, yeah. Right. That's what that Before is. selection is made. So yeah. whether you have an evaluator there or not, this, that's what we will do. Well, I trust the court to be able to make, you know, and I think you do too, so, and that's what you're so saying. So now the but court is fixed. determining who gets the bid. No, 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 no. The court is simply saying, you could say, I choose Jonathan Bazan to be <clears> on this, and I could say, I choose Stanley Victor, um, and everybody else chooses somebody, and then there's five people on there. Well, um, historically, it's it's it's... Let's say nobody chose Daryl Martin. Yeah. Okay, we, and let's say nobody chose. No, but Daryl will stay there. No matter what. Well, well, so I think Daryl just said, "Why doesn't Daryl get a pick too?" Right. Well, well, I, I, so Daryl could pick himself if no, you didn't but, pick but, him. But, 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 but I, I think I think what Commissioner Price is saying is that um, budget's also integral in part of the Budget is integral. Part of the integral. That's right. Uh, you know. I, I've used the DA as sometimes as uh, at least have their input on some of these positions. Yeah. I think it's important, you know, even if you got to select, you work with me on who you select. I mean, I think that's important. You know? See, we're going to end up with the same people anyway. Okay. Well, we're going to end up with a situation where it it it's there's no um, no department starting off ahead of, of anything. Everything is we don't have that anyway. Well, you've got a situation where you're you're um, choosing um, a selection committee of staff for bosses for that staff or perhaps for people on that selection committee or their <coughs> boss to get the job. So I'm just trying to make it a, as uh, arm's length and fair to everybody as possible. Well, at the end of the day, like, yeah, it's going it, it, to be, we're just really talking about a, a evaluation. I mean, we we got to make sure that we got a baseline. Like I said, we want budget, we want administration. And, the, and my problem is if all five of us get to pick and nobody picks either one of them, or let's say we just pick one of them. You know, we, I think we, we, we... Why don't all we five of us pick and then we can come back if it appears that uh, the court doesn't have the collective wisdom to make good picks, we can come back in two weeks and revisit it or something. But uh, no, I, no, we need to go... Each court look. member can put their own staff on there, correct? They could if they wanted to, sure. Okay. So then we have our staff picking who's going to get the, the bid. Who's yeah. you're evaluating the quality of the and we're going to be picking firms. who's going to get the bid. Yeah, evaluating the quality of the search for based and, on and that that's, and then that's and that's and that's how uh, are we detached from determining who gets the bid? It's, it goes have, outside of our policy. It's, it's not purchasing. You don't have to be that detached from it. Um, it is. It's not purchasing. Okay. What you're doing I here, I don't is understand how you're coming up with a process to exercise your discretion. As a court to choose judge, a judge, how director. Is he not purchasing though? That's what he's then, saying. Then why can't they, we do that on any bid? Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we, in we, other we, words, we're not going to have an evaluation committee made up of staff and that. We're going to pick who's going to be on that. I mean, let's just change our policy. The, the ultimate. Put it on yeah, the, next, the ultimate next deal. Uh, deal on getting, for instance, car repairs is somebody to go spend money with to fix our cars. The ultimate deal here is we're just looking for a little help and exercise our We're going to go spend money on, on four with votes. Whoever that, that person, whoever that vendor is, we're going to spend money with those four individual vendors, and we're going to be making the decision. That's right. And so you want to evaluate it and make the decision. 
It's really no different than this is, it's your decision to make. It's this court's decision to make who is the on next director. Every bid that we put out, every RP we put out, it's our decision uh, to make. The difference on, on the two things is if we're, if we're hiring, some, if we're picking someone to sell us radios or fix our cars, we should be out of that process and ultimately we pick someone that's the low bidder or the best bidder. Here, we're not choosing someone um, to do that. We're choosing someone to help the court advise us and bring us people so that we can make our best selection on a new um, health and human services director, for instance, or juvenile director. So um, it's it's a different thing than what is normal. But these because people are in the we same could, business as a tire salesman? Or, or We could do away with this whole, for instance, we can't do away with the whole process for, for engine repair. But we could do away with this whole process. Post this on monster.com. I'm not recommending we do that. Post this on monster.com, and we could all look at those resumes and make a decision because it's your core job to pick those HR and other directors. I wouldn't recommend we do that either. What, what I would recommend that we do is, is why don't we hold this for two weeks? Um, yeah, come back. Can, can uh, Mr. Price and I develop our criteria for who we, should, who we think should be on the evaluation committee? meet with the five of you guys, get some suggestions of who you might se select for those committees, and then put together a committee and bring it back yeah, to I'll, you. I'll, 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 yeah, 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 thank you. Right. Yeah, right. Call, call, I got, yeah, I got called Mr. Price. Look, yeah, but I want to pull juvenile. Yeah, except juvenile. Yeah. I, I know juvenile. we have no yeah. jurisdiction over yeah, juvenile, yeah, but go, the other three. Right. We have no jurisdiction. Right. I want to go forward with that juvenile. RFP. Okay, because that's that's we, again up to the yeah. up to the juvenile board. I, I will uh, pull those pull that one out. But if you will if you will allow me over the next two weeks, uh, those three that are the responsibility of the court get together with Mr. Price, develop the evaluation criteria, and meet with the court members uh, and and discuss their selection. Yeah. Okay. And with the juvenile, we will have a full RFP coming from the court, but supervised by the juvenile department, by the juvenile, by, by the juvenile board. Right. Right. And I, I was asked by Judge Shannon, who I bumped into uh, over the weekend, to go ahead and post that juvenile position, which we will do all. So. Can, uh, can we do it together for the sake of uh, price, or does it has to be separate altogether? I think a couple of those are pretty specialized. Yeah. I think juveniles are specialized yeah. recruiters. Uh -huh. In addition, HHS, I think, is a pretty specialized So recruiter. what you're saying is that some firms that might look for health and human services and human resources might not be they might the firm? Not be. Okay. Or they may be, Doctor. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. they may, we may have one that will... So what so you're envisioning in all likelihood, and I realize we're coming back in two weeks, but so let's say there's an evaluation committee for the other three, mm -hmm. and it would be a slightly different or completely different evaluation committee for juvenile. Right. But theoretically, I think what you're getting at and what Dr. Daniel was getting at early, theoretically, if the absolute best firm out there was ABC Global Search Firm, right. both firms could find that the best one for both for juvenile and for health and human services and et cetera, et cetera, is ABC Global. Right. And then at that point, they could work together to get the best price from ABC Global, right? That's right. right. That's On right. the other hand, if the juvenile search group thought ABC Global is second or third place, our number one place is one, two, three, then one, two, three would get that. And ABC would get right. okay. juvenile. Right. I got it. Right. Okay. Well, we still want to move forward with juvenile. Right. Yeah, with all of them. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, no, 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 juvenile today because we want to post. We well, now wait a second. Them. If we go forward with juvenile, who's on the evaluation committee for the, juvenile? That's, the, the, that's the, up to the juvenile board the again. Juvenile that's up board. to the juvenile board. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and really and truly, I can okay. tell you this, but if you read some of the minutes, we've already made that decision. We're going forward to evaluate. So, so, not this court, but the juvenile board will make that decision, and yes. not not department. Because in the RFP, it said just for clarity's mm -hmm. sake, it says that the juvenile department, the departments, will make the decision, but that's going to be the juvenile board. That that's the board. Right. So, oh right, well, then let's pull forty-five, but but amend it. Amend it. Yeah. Right. Just the juvenile. who was the maker? Commissioner Price. I'll do. You got uh, no, I moved it. I, you want to amend it? Commissioner Price, move it. it. I second. Right. And so right. I'm, 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 I'm making the amendment that we pull and go forward today with the uh, juvenile uh, the, uh, juvenile services. services. Right. With the, with the evaluators being determined by the juvenile board. 
That's all written in statute. Right, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. That's all written in statute. That's right. Uh, all those. Oh, all right. And, uh, I, I, I and, and you're moving that we pull the other for two weeks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All, and I'm all. amenable to that. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, no, 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 no. Um, we got. Hold on. I'm trying to that. help her. She, she, okay. Yeah. There okay. we go. Yeah. Okay. Right. There we go. Okay. All right, we've got some registered speakers. Let, just let the record reflect. I'm still right. I'm still. I don't. I doesn't make any difference. But I'll put it on the record. Uh, information four and five. You know, I continue to strenuously object. It meets all the codes. That's fine. Uh, I, and believe it or not, I tried to find the publication. So I think uh, not this go budget needs some extra work. But in the future, when you bring this forward, I want to see the publication on where they made that announcement. You know, we don't even know. Why are we talking, Commissioner? It's these uh, yeah, budget school. school. Oh, these okay. schools. These schools again. Okay. UME Preparatory Academy, uh, a Legacy Preparatory Charter Academy. Right. Uh, you know, all these folks, they do bonds. You know, I, 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 are they doing millions of dollars worth of bonds? Are they doing hundreds? They're doing really millions. But my point is, we don't know. We're just posting. I know we're, we're complying with statute because I think Judge uh, Roden says that we are the arching agency in the county. My problem is, is if we're going to post it going forward, we ought, to, we ought to post it. We ought to really know exactly how much money these schools are, are are getting because my position is always with um, <coughs> charter schools is that they're siphoning off public dollars. Is, and th that's, is that the chief concern, the siphoning off of the public dollars? Well, yeah, well they're, they're doing bonds too, but, but they, they're committing bonds and all we're doing is it's proving having it. that background information. The, yeah, I just, yeah, I just want to yeah, and and I, I concur that charter schools siphon off public dollars, but I don't see where my discretion is any different to not approve these. Oh, no, no, I'm not saying not approve it. I'm just saying if we, the way this is filing purposes, yeah. I've said it each time, I just want to, just want it all. And you said Judge Roden, which reminds me, Judge Roden, we're so glad to have you back. I guess you didn't miss, you didn't miss any court, did you? No, 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 no. We're glad to have you back and yeah, glad you're yeah, he's, he's, have work, he's, work, he's working my yeah. phone. And we're glad to have you back, and we're glad that your uh, health is strong. Did he have, did he have, uh, did he have permission to work from home? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he I've did. asked that he um, defer, and I think he's doing that to Jane Roden to be his, his hourly supervisor as to how many hours he can work. Because he, he, uh, otherwise you can't get him to stop working. Thank you. And, um, and we're, we're, we're glad everything came out hey, okay. Thank you, Jim. All right, and so then we do have these uh, public speakers. Will Bailiff please read, read the rules of the court for our public speakers? All commission of court attendees are hereby advised that this meeting is conducted in accordance with the provisions of the Dallas County Code, section 74-71. Visitors and registered speakers are to preserve order and decorum at all times. Personal profane or slanderous remarks are not appropriate and will not be allowed at any time during this public meeting. Any and all applause is to be kept brief in observance of time constraints. Disruptive visitors and or registered speakers may be removed and are subject to the penalties provided in the state of Texas Penal Code sections 38.13, 42.01, and 42.05. Registered, registered individual speakers are limited to a maximum of three minutes, and the maximum discussion of any one topic is limited to 30 minutes. All right. Uh, Ms. Dolores Phillips, come on down.
Attorney Warren Ernst unlawfully redacted two and a half hours from three hours of footage from the first floor was is an evident cover-up of me being taken to um, Green Oaks to Thank you. Okay. That's 22 minutes of three hours of footage. The teams, the connections, and the networks behind why I was taken to Green Oaks is yet to come out. Time allows and permits truth. Truth is equity and it's coming. Right now, Dallas County uh, is being asked by the government what's going on with the Dallas County schools and the money that's being spent. Right now, HUD is asking the city of Dallas how they and why and where did the money go that they said they spent on building these projects for the poor. I want to humbly say that in the documents that you just received, 170610, that's presently in the Texas Supreme Court. And Honorable Jenkins, this is what I wanted to ask you. If I step to any one of your non-minority employees in this court, this floor or upstairs, and I ask your non-minority female employee to open me being who I am, doesn't matter what open means to me, it's what it means to you, and she tells me no. And I continue to harass her as a black female. If I was in your court as a defendant being charged, arrested and charged for harassing and stalking a white female, what would be my consequences? I want the world to know that the city of Dallas, Dallas County, and possibly the state of Texas were all in on me being wrongfully arrested and taken to Green Oaks, possibly because I refuse to open and become one with whatever y'all got going on here. I'm not afraid to speak what y'all done and what y'all continue to do. But in that 22 minute video, Warren Ernst release that he unlawfully redacted two and a half hours of footage from the first floor is that y'all unlawfully arrested me by premeditation to obstruct justice, to intercept the court documents that's not on the video. Miss Thorne, DPD social worker, went to go get my documents. I never was arrested. It was never no disorderly conduct. It, I never had to be restrained. It was no hollering. It was none of that. Why did they have to have to redact two and a half hours of footage from the DPD meeting that Mayor Rollins instructed two to three weeks prior to October 25th, 2013. And you're, you're out of time, Dolores, I'm sorry. But can you answer that, Honorable Jenkins? If I was a defendant in your court having been arrested and accused of unlawfully harassing, harassing black mailing. Yeah, Dolores, I, I, can you answer that? It's your time to speak, we can't. Uh, you can't answer that question being a judge at a court? We can't. Dolores, go back and forth with you on things that are on the agenda. Sorry, but thanks for. Thank you. All right, and our next speaker is Mr. Davin Bernstein. Who is it? Mr. Davin Bernstein, Mr. Davin Bernstein. Our next speaker is Mr. Robert Cigarelli. Good morning, everybody. Um, as you see what I, the notes I said, I'm very uh, disturbed and very frustrated and very ticked about what's going on with the homeless situation here in the city of Dallas. It starts at the top. Yesterday's article will talk about the mayor and what he wants in a new mayor. He talks about business, Southern Dallas, arts and culture, and education and the workforce. When the, when the mayor first came here, homeless was the number one project on his list. Obviously, it's down at the bottom. And it starts from the top and it trickles down, so where the homeless situation is not going to get any better. It's going to get a big fat F. Um, right now, I'm talking about the Dallas Morning News written by Sharon Grisby. They talk about the uh, Dallas Metro, Dallas uh, DMHA, Dallas uh, Metro Homeless Alliance. They talk about they're not doing the job properly and they bring up um, the partnership that was Mike Rollins, uh, led by uh, Judge, uh, by uh, Teresa Daniel and, and Clayton. And it talks about being very slow and a, lot of, and a lot of things that Clayton and Daniel have to do. They don't have the time. Well, I just want to say one thing about that. March 1st, and Metro Dallas Homeless Lions had their annual meeting. Dr. Daniel um, introduced 
uh, Cindy Crane, and she just left right after that, five minutes. Um, I was very perturbed about that. It's very disrespectful, especially someone that's really interested in the homeless to leave so quickly, and it really bothered me, and I just say that I am right on with Sharon Grisby's article. Um, I am very perturbed what's going on with these homeless commissions. Um, the one I went to with Dr. Daniel, there were 50 people there. They didn't say anything at all. They sat on their butts. And I'm only one that spoke. A lot of these people are MHMR providers. They can bring out a lot of information that can be done to, to explode the situation up to the top. In other words, what the problems are and what to do about it. However, it's been very, very quiet. I have a lot of information that I need to tell you right now that I would like to bring out. That way we can get this information out and make sure the homeless situation can be very well be corrected. I am talking about several people that refuse to talk. One of the first one is Dave Hogan, crisis intervention. He has all the information that's needed, but he's been very quiet about it. I've asked him several times to speak. He hasn't said one word. He can break this wide open. Another person is Ken Amogo, Dallas Metro Care Housing. He was on the Homeless Commission last year. He's very frustrated. He's given up, and he has no interest in helping out anymore because you don't see anyone interested in what's going on, and he felt like the Homeless Commission last year was a waste of time. Another person, Ron Stretcher. He's the one about the Dawson State Jail talking about being a crisis immediately, and he would like to, I would like him to speak to talk about What's going on? Is the time up already? Yeah. Oh, time man. Thank you. Man, I, if I need three more minutes, because I need to break this wide open. I mean, I'm sorry. Mr. I mean, Riley, you're, you're out of time, sir. All right. Our next speaker is Hopkins. Uh, Mr. William Hopkins. Mr. William Hopkins. Mr. William Hopkins. I don't see Mr. Hopkins. That concludes our public speakers. The court. What did you say you saw? No, I think not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, the court will now adjourn for uh, chapter for our closed session. We'll consider matters under Chapter 551 of the Government Code as previously posted. Any action as a result of the closed session will take place in a subsequent open session.
The executive session court stands adjourned. Thanks. Um, hey. Thank you so much. Looking forward to working with you.